investing in property makes sense. Investing in the right property takes knowledge. Welcome to the Rewarding Property Decisions podcast. I'm Jared McCabe, Director of Wakeland Property Advisory. Join me for expert insights into the fundamentals, trends and opportunities to help you create long-term wealth through smart property decisions. Welcome to episode 44 of the Rewarding Property Decisions podcast. So this will be the final podcast for 2022. And looking into next year, I was thinking that we would start to do a little bit more profiling of certain areas around Melbourne, um, suburbs, general locations. And so I thought we might, um, today would be as good a time as any to start that off. So we're going to start with the inner western suburbs of Melbourne, and I'm very fortunate today to be joined by my colleague Brenton Potter. Brenton grew up in the western suburbs, and he is our local Western suburban expert. He grew up in Oak Park, worked as a real estate agent prior to getting into a property advisory in the Western and Northwestern suburbs, and has pre- previously lived in Maidstone and just finished renovating a uh, house in little cottage in Footscray with his wife, and they're about to move back in. So, welcome, Brenton. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me today, Jared. Okay, so what is it about the Melbourne's Western suburbs that you really like? Uh, look, I think um, the appeal for me first started when I started working in real estate around Flemington, Kensington, and the village uh, lifestyle that that I saw, um, you know, residents um, experience on a day-to-day basis. So that that to me was was quite appealing, and and that that drew me to the West and wanted me to explore more of what the West had to offer, and um, it was was part of the reason why I uh, ended up finding a little house in Footscray. I got priced out of Flemington and Kensington back in 2010. Um, but yeah, certainly was able to, to get uh, get an imprint on, on in Footscray in 2010. Yeah. Any particular property types that really drew your attention in those areas? Well, the types of houses I was involved with back then selling uh, were those single front Victorian uh, cottages, and I I had an attraction to them, and a lot of think a lot of people do, um, and certainly so that was there's that type of architecture out uh, a little bit further out in the west as well. So for example, in Seddon, Yarraville. Um, and and Footscray, so that was that was certainly why those a, a big reason why those suburbs were on my radar. Very good. So, given that you've been in the in the western and northwestern suburbs for a, a fairly long period of time, what changes have you seen over the? Well, I guess we'll start longer term, but over the last twenty odd years, what have you seen that's um, that's gentrified and, and changed in those areas? Yeah, I think over the past uh, twenty years, I mean, a, a couple of big changes. The um, uh, the development in the early 2000s or late 90s, sorry, in the early 2000s of the Docklands and, and workers um, and more, I guess, white-collar jobs being there and then, and then people seeing the inner west as being close by and a more affordable option to live, that certainly was a big draw card. Um, the other other one as well uh, is probably the CityLink and making that yep. part of the west more accessible um, yeah, t- to everyone else. Uh, another thought is uh, the the revival of the, the Sun Theatre, which uh, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, which I really think was uh, um, really lifted the, the Yarraville Village. I mean, that was in the mid nineties. That was revived 90s, mid yeah. to late nineties. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when I uh, moved out west, that was certainly you know well and alive. And, and I, I used to experience the, you know, the Yarraville Village on a on a weekly basis and. Um, and yeah, good. So I, I had no idea until I looked at the history that it was ever actually run down and let go either. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Um, and what about in more recent times? What are some of the things that have um, drawn you back there? And obviously, as I said, you, you're doing the Renault and or nearly finished the Renault in Footscray. But what um, what's drawn you back there? What are you what are you like enjoying in and around the area these days? Yeah, so when I originally moved into to Footscray, I remember going to I guess trying to find a a, a good cafe or. Um, you know, or a pub meal uh, or a decent decent pub. And I found myself getting pulled back to, say, around Flemington, Kensington, even Brunswick, um, which, yeah, but over the last, say, five to ten years, that's really changed and, and certainly more around, um, you know, Seddon, um, Footscray. We've seen that cafe culture really increase um, as well as the, 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 the restaurants and, and the pubs um, also. And that, that's been a real appeal for me. Um, from a lifestyle perspective, and also people moving into the area, and I've noticed the uh, the demographic change over the last ten years. That's for sure. You talk about pubs and cafes. I think I read or saw the other day that um, old Franco Cotso's building's uh, about to go um, with a bit of a uh, remodelling. Yes, yeah. Uh, look, I'm I'm pretty happy as a as a resident um, about that. I mean, there's you know there was it was um, 
proposed to be an apartment development, but we've we've seen quite a number of uh, of high rises come up around. Particularly Footscray. that spot too. Isn't yeah, it? particularly yeah. around that spot there. So um, I believe there might have been an issue there with height restrictions. Um, so Moondog have approached um, yeah the uh, the owners, and I believe there's something in proposal there about a three level, uh, say brewery um, with with a rooftop terrace, which is something that is probably. You know, Footscray hasn't seen, so it'll be it'll be very welcome to the area. There's a lot more of the smaller microbrewery type things going in and around there, isn't there? But that's that's happening all around Melbourne, which is which is great. It's very very popular. Um, I think one of the one of the shortcomings that the the inner west has probably had, and it's not alone in that area over the years, it's been the inner north as well, but is probably been education facilities. And we've spoken a lot, um, and we speak a lot to clients that. Um, one of the draw cards for, say, Sydney property is water. So people really like the beaches and that's where the high-value properties start and or high-land-value properties are, and then they it sort of decreases as you go further inland. Um, and that, not just the, the beaches, but also the, the harbour in Sydney. But Melbourne is based more around probably education facilities and it's always been that way. Not necessarily private schools, but um, really good quality public schools as well, but also universities, that type of thing. Um, and so that's probably been one of the, the letdowns, but I think that's changing too from what you've told me as well. Yeah, it, um, it, it certainly has. I mean, just over the last few years, the government have put quite a bit of money into schools there. Um, there's been a new uh, high school, uh, seven year seven to nine campus go in Seddon, um, and that's combining with um, a, a school in Barclay Street, Footscray, um, which was an all-girls school, is now okay. co-ed. Yep. Uh, mixed in then with also which used to be Footscray City College and that's all combined under the one banner now and roof as as Footscray High School um, and and certainly um, yeah is is exciting for the area yeah. um, there's yeah there's a number of um, there's also Maribyrnong uh, Sports Academy yeah. as well which yes. um, which is yeah targeted towards more of a, a sports performance um, high school but something that um, yeah, is, is also welcome in the in the West. Yeah. And look, that's the secondary schools particularly is, is very welcome because there's been – the primary schools have been quite good over in that part of the world. I know I've had um, clients but also friends that have loved and really enjoyed living in the inner western suburbs, but they've had kids that have – once they've gotten to grade four, five and six and they're starting to look at next stage of education and that's been one of the things that they've been a little bit concerned about and have had to move because they haven't had the option. So it's great that there's now starting to be – opportunities around for um for secondary education absolutely um yep that's great now i guess then looking into the future what are some of the um the developments that are coming I and mean, we know there's a lot of government spending on infrastructure going on in the inner western suburbs so can you give us a bit of an overview on on some of those projects yeah so the, I mean, the westgate tunnel project that's yep. that's a big one there um the the metro tunnel project as well as an entrance going to kensington so they're opening up um new train stations one in parkville another one in north melbourne such as arden, arden, street. arden yeah. street as yep. well so um that's pretty exciting Another one, and it's a little bit further out, but you know we're starting to see um, this area. I've, I've personally seen it over the last ten years change a lot too. In Sunshine, is the airport rail link. Okay. Um, and the proposed plan there is to have trains running every three minutes um, to the uh, or arriving at the station every three minutes, taking you directly to Melbourne, the Melbourne International Airport. So that's going to be just um, you know a, a big tick for for people being able to to get uh, to, to get to the airport and go overseas and that I guess the other question that I had and you may know this you may not but um, that as a um, as a public transport facility that'll be available to people to just to access the city from sunshine too they don't have to just be coming from the airport that's that's correct so I, well, I believe so but yeah it um, it will be yeah certainly a, a really good um, uh, option for people going to go into the city. Yeah, great. Okay, um, and are there? So if we then move towards um, looking at property types, so we've we've looked at the general areas and what's happening in there, but what are the, some of the different housing styles that we see? I mean, I think there's a fairly good eclectic mix, but if you look at say suburbs like Yarraville and Seddon, how do they differ to say West Footscray and Maidstone? Yeah, so I think I mean Yarraville and Seddon, um, you've got you've certainly got a, a lot more consistent streetscape with architecture. Say, for example, for Victorians or in West Footscray, you've got uh, quite a few streets with particular say either post-war homes or Californian bungalows types of homes as well Yep. Um, versus, say, Maidstone, which is a bit more eclectic, and you've got a, a mix there of contemporary townhouses, um, potentially, you know, some Art Deco-type properties as well, um, and, and then a mix of post-war too. 
Okay, so yeah, the, there is a lot of different styles, and you can. There's a variety of, of property types too. So the like you said, Yarraville and Seddon typically have a lot of the period single front cottages, that sort of thing. But how does it work? If you go from, quite often, say in other parts of Melbourne, if you look at say Brunswick, you get a lot of single fronts, and you move out to Coburg, you start to get a bit bigger properties, larger blocks of land. Is it similar in the inner west, or does it move in different directions? Uh, it moves a bit in different directions, but yeah, if say for example Footscray, you don't have the as big a footprints, and even West Footscray, the family homes, um, you, you know, are typically on anywhere from say three fifty to to maybe four fifty or five hundred square meters. Um, as you get further out towards saving um, sunshine, as we were mentioning before, the blocks get bigger as well. There, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so if, if we have a look at um, price brackets for these sorts of areas, um, just to give people a bit of an indication as to um, where they need to be. If we looked at, say, two-bedroom, single-front cottages, terrace houses, that sort of thing, um, as a starting point, let's look at Yarraville. What what would we be needing to spend, do you think? And it, I mean, I'm, there's going to be differences be, depending upon condition, size, um, that type of thing, number of bedrooms. But as a bit of a range, what would we be looking at in, in Yarraville as a starting point? Yeah, I think for, for the type of property that you just mentioned there, Jared, we'd be somewhere probably around that 1-1 one, one to 1-2 to one, as an entry point yeah. and then going up to, to maybe 1-3. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, and what about Seddon? Yeah, Seddon, Seddon similar. Um, yeah, once again, it probably depends on on the um, the street and, and the size of the property. Yeah. Um, but overall, say that one 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 to to one three mark. Yeah. Okay. And then if we moved a little bit to to say Footscray, is it a little bit more affordable for the for a similar type property? Yeah, it is. Uh, entry levels there, you're probably going to have to be around that that mill to one point one mark. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. And then if we moved out a bit further out, like we um, we spoke about before about Maidstone, it tends to be a little bit more eclectic. There's a, a variety of um, property types. There's been a lot of infill. Developments done on former commercial industrial sites there, but for a um, for family homes or for townhouses, what are we looking at in that in that sort of price bracket for more owner occupier type markets? Yeah, so for family homes in a, in the right part of Maidstone, I mean you'll be around a million dollars, but the difference there is, uh, you know, you'll be getting a, a three or four bedroom home potentially, or, yeah. or townhouse with street frontage compared to you know those single front homes that we were mentioning before. Um, that are on much smaller blocks of land as but well. But higher land components, That's yeah. Right. Okay. Um, all right, so if I asked you um, what would your favourite pocket of um, the inner western suburbs be, where would you go and why? Yeah, look, I, good question. I, I mean, I like um, – there's a pocket of Seddon that I really like. Um, it's uh, around Tennyson Street, Seddon Street, Browning, um, those, those – that pocket there. The, the reason I like it, I mean, I'm a big fan of the the um, the Victorian era type homes, which that uh, there's a lot of that architecture okay. in in those streets. Um, the streets have a heritage overlay um, on, on them, so they're quite consistent. Yep. Development, while well, while it's possible, it's it's limited, and and you can't really um, do too much to the facade of the home. But to me, that brings a bit of an old world charm to to those types of streets in that area. Um, another reason why I like that pocket is you're so close to the Seddon Village there, yeah. so Victoria and Charles Street, um, which have a number of restaurants, bars, cafes, and um, uh, and also boutique stores. Um, not to men- mention as well the um, access to, to Middle Footscray Station, which isn't too far away, oh, uh, as well as Seddon, St- uh, Seddon Station too. Seddon so well. you've yep. got the option there. And what about in the inner western suburbs? Is there, um, I meant to ask you this before, but parklands, that sort of thing, what's the um, availability like there? I know um, Maribyrnong River is good from a, a running track, bike track sort of perspective, but other parklands and things as well? Yeah, there certainly is. There's um, over the years something I've noticed that's changed a lot, and I think the council have been pretty proactive with this. Is just introducing more um, open green spaces um, in the areas, and and you know Footscray Park has has been around for a number of years, and that's always been great, which is um, just right near Vic Uni. But um, but there, there's a number of different um, you know parks that are opening up, and also just spaces that. Um, might have been dead space or empty space of you know in Barclay Street in West Footscray the village there um, there's a lot more kind of communal seating and and, and spots for, for for people to go to and this is drawing more people to, to those types of areas too to be able to enjoy it with their families on the weekend um, and certainly more of a more of an atmosphere in these parts in, right. of the west perfect all right so we like to uh, always try and bring in a case study or a bit of a uh, war story um, from previous experience so have you got a property perhaps or someone that you've dealt with um, 
some time ago and uh, that that property's performed quite well. What have you? What can you tell us? Yeah, I think, I mean, go back to probably when I was starting my advocacy career. Um, clearly, I, I jumped from the, the selling real estate in, in the inner west. I, I really the, the dark side to the good side. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, look, I enjoyed my time selling, but yeah, no, certainly on the better side now. Um, the, yeah, the, the, pro, the brief was a home buyer brief. Um, these particular clients were priced out of Flemington and Kensington. They did enjoy the west. Um, I put Footscray to them. They didn't know much about Footscray at the time. Uh, showed them the streets, of, you know, as, as to where to buy. And, and this particular street, well, the appeal about the house was um, it was um, uh, bigger than what you could get in Flemington and Kensington. So it was on about 250 square metres. Um, it had the side drive, which was quite appealing for off-street parking. Yeah, you don't get that very often. No, you don't, um, as well as the, the walking distance to the village too. So, uh, I mean, they were the, the key drivers uh, for, for this purchase. And um, we ended up, I think, paying about 680 or, or touch over it for it. Um, and in today's market, I mean, that was back in 2013. In today's market, you'd be well over a million dollars now and probably closer towards 1.1 1. 1 for okay. something like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's done well. Very yeah. good, very good. All right, well, that's probably about it for today's episode. Brenton, thank you very much for coming in and joining me. No, you're welcome. Thank you, Jared. Thanks for having me. So that uh, concludes episode 44 of the Rewarding Property Decisions podcast. And of, as I said before, our last episode for 2022. Um, thanks again for uh, for listening throughout the year. And, and as always, please feel free to share the podcast far and wide with friends, family, colleagues, and anyone else who might have an interest in property. And if you do need more information, visit the website, wakeland.com.au. But otherwise, we do wish you a very happy and safe festive season and uh, look forward to speaking again in 2023.